friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and it is week three of the Every Bit Counts Challenge where I try to preserve something every day during the month of August. So why don't we get started and I will show you what we did this week. It's Sunday and I'm not going to make it out to the garden today because I have a sick baby. So I just pulled a the last gallon of 2020 Concord grapes out of the freezer and I'm going to get this turned into jelly today, finally. <laughs> Our grapes were simmering for about an hour and now we've strained them out and we have all this juice and my ladies here have decided to help me make it into some jelly. We are making um, grape jelly using Pomona's, Pomona's pectin. I'm sorry, this is the cookbook we're using and I will link it in the description below. We are tripling it. So we have 12 cups of juice here. We're getting ready to bring to a boil. We've made our calcium powder, and we're going to do four tablespoons of the calcium water and add it to our boiling juice. So why don't you go ahead, Grace. So <clears throat> Pomona's pectin, if you're not familiar with it, it is a type of pectin that's activated by calcium. So it comes with this calcium powder that you make. Um, you add water to and make a little liquid out of and you add this to your liquid that you'll be making your jelly or your jam out of and then um, later on when you add the pectin you don't have to use as much sugar with Pomona's we're going to use only three cups of sugar for this entire you know 12 cups of juice to make our jelly and it sets perfectly all right are we ready <laughs> Grace has put three cups of sugar in this bowl with four tablespoons of our Pomona's pectin and she's just mixing it thoroughly. And then as soon as our uh, juice here comes to a boil, we will start adding the sugar and pectin mixture slowly to it. And then we'll let that boil for two minutes before we fill our jars. It boiled for two minutes, and now Gracie is filling our jars. We're kind of doing a mix of whatever empty jars we had lying around. So we're doing some pints and some half pints, and then whatever um, is extra we'll just put in a container to use this week. We'll cool it and put it in the fridge, and it'll set there. And we can always use jelly, can't we, sis? Yeah. <laughs> we're at the point now where we go through almost one entire half pint of jelly just making one meal's worth of sandwiches. So... Um, yeah, <laughs> we need a lot of jelly. Miss Grace is cleaning our rims. We ended up with three pints and what is that? Six half pints and then this little extra bit that we're just going to stick in the fridge and use for our next meal of sandwiches. Um, so she's just wiping those. We'll get the lids on and then we're going to water bath them for 10 minutes. All right, I'm not sure if I've ever shared this tip with you, but if you have really hard water like we have, distilled white vinegar, if you just add a dash of it into your pot, your canning water, go ahead, Gracie, that will prevent you from getting a calcium buildup on the outside of your jar. So just a little dash like this. Just a little more, sis. Oops, don't fall. <laughs> there we go, just like that, that's enough, and that'll prevent any kind of buildup on your jars. And we're just gonna get those boiling. Good job, give me five. All of our jelly jars sealed really beautifully and it gelled up nicely. And my Gracie girl here is just labeling them all for me so we know which kind of jelly they are. We'll get them on the shelves. All right, it's Monday and I've had a sick baby. It's almost eight o'clock and I needed to get something preserved. So um, <laughs> I just grabbed some old chickens that I had in the freezer that need to be turned into stock. It's just mostly like feet and wings and a carcass. And so I'm just gonna have this in the crock pot overnight and we're gonna pressure can it tomorrow. Our broth cooked overnight in the crock pot and I ended up getting, um, what is this, five quarts here of broth and meat. And that'll be good. We'll get this on the shelf. These will make some nice soup this winter. 
And for today's project, I just have a bunch of odds and ends here. Just some green beans, okra, various peppers, some garlic, and some little cherry and grape tomatoes. And I'm going to get those in various mixtures into these jars and make a brine of equal parts vinegar and water with maybe some other seasonings. And we're just going to pickle these um, to use them up. My beautiful helper, Elizabeth, is hard at work. Thank you, sis. I have the baby on my back and couldn't do this right now without her because he is still not feeling good. But um, what we're doing is filling each pint jar with a different item. So we have two here with cherry tomatoes. One is with okra. We have some green beans. These are green peppers. And then we're doing banana peppers. And then in each jar, we put one or two cloves of garlic. We're going to slice up these cayenne peppers, and in each jar we'll add a cayenne pepper or two to give it a little spice. And then over here, on the stove, I'm working on boiling up I have equal parts of distilled white vinegar and water. And then I just added a little bit of raw honey to it. And then um, we'll put, we'll get this going, and then this is what we'll fill our jars with. I will also add a teaspoon of salt per jar. And then these will just be little jars of goodies that um, will be pickled and can be nice treats. What do you think, sis? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we ended up combining our green peppers and banana peppers here and then also um, filling some banana peppers in with this one batch of cherry tomatoes. And we ended up with five pints, which is wonderful. And she is going to fill them, leaving a fourth inch headspace with our brine here. And then we are going to hot water bath these for, I believe, 10 minutes. Um, and these make a great snack. I'll show you over here um, some other ones we already have done up. Up here you can see some jars of various items that we've already done. So these are just a great little addition to, if we have what we call like a smorgasbord lunch or a charcuterie board lunch <laughs> we um, just add a bunch of various snacks and so we'll open a jar of these and the kids will snack on them you know like the the pickled beans or the okra they're also great as pizza toppings you know we love pickled peppers or pickled tomatoes um, the pickled garlic in there even gets eaten up they usually fight over it so this is a wonderful way to use up odds and ends that otherwise you know it's not a big enough batch to do anything else with but, you know, it's going to go bad if you just leave it in your fridge until you accumulate enough. So just pickle it up. Equal parts vinegar and water, some salt, a little bit of sugar or honey, and you'll be good to go. All right, I'm going to help her finish this up and get them in the water bath. Might get a little more. A little more to get to a fourth an inch. All good. Now we're gonna get our lids. We need what three One. wide lids? Oh yeah, three wide lids and two tiny lids. And two little lids. Right, it is Wednesday the 18th. We just cleaned up breakfast. The big boys are getting ready to go do chores. And I today am going to turn these tomatoes into tomato jam for Adam. My first step is just going to be getting them in a pot to simmer down just like you would tomato sauce. What do you think, John John? Good. Does it Oh, are you pouty? What's the matter? All right, so I've got my tomatoes sliced and I'm just going to start putting them through the blender and then getting them in a pot on the stove. I'm putting them in the blender with the skins. Okay, so I blended down all of our tomatoes um, and what I'm going to do is let this simmer on the stove today while we do school. We want this to be nice and thick. So this is just going to continue to cook down. Right, it is lunchtime now and as you can see my tomatoes have cooked down quite a bit. 
I'm leaving the seeds in here because that will not bother Adam at all. And But I've added some spices. Let me show you what we've added. So to my tomato sauce, I've added one teaspoon each of... Oh, hold on. Somebody dropped his spoon. Do you need your spoon, buddy? Yeah? Say hi. Here's your spoon. <laughs> um, okay, so we added one teaspoon each of cinnamon, allspice, and cloves. And then I, I'm using Pomona's pectin for this recipe. So um, you use a calcium powder that's in water. And for that, I used four teaspoons of the calcium powder mixture. And then I'm going to use three teaspoons of pectin. And then I also added a half a cup of lemon juice and four cups of sugar to this. I'm going to let it cook a little bit longer. Add my um, pectin. That's the last step once I get this boiling. And then we're going to get it in jars. As you can see here, I got about three and a half pints of the tomato jam, plus a little bit left over that I'll put in the fridge um, for now. And you're probably wondering, what is tomato jam? That sounds kind of gross, and I don't blame you one bit for thinking that. <laughs> I had never heard of tomato jam until I met my husband. He had a patient about 12 years ago that let him try some tomato jam and gave him a little jar of it. Adam brought it home, ate it all up very quickly, and asked me to please try to replicate it. And so in previous years, I've tried different recipes, and he's kind of settled on a kind that he likes. And the last couple of years, I didn't make him any. And then at the end of the growing season, he was like, next year, can you please make me some tomato jam? And so this is something I'm doing for him. I just had a small amount of tomatoes that I could use up, and it was perfect for this project. Um, it has a bit of like that kind of spicy clove, you know, cinnamon flavor. Um, the pectin in it does make it spreadable like a sweeter fruit jam. And that's exactly how Adam eats it. Instead of putting raspberry jam or blackberry jam on a piece of toast, he'll put the tomato jam on it. And it's just, it's, it's a different taste. It's, it's kind of one of those fun things to can because you can't really find it in the store very often unless you're in like a specialty school, um, store. So um, it's fun to be able to make that for him. And that is precisely why I did it. So now I need to get the lids on these and get them in the water bath canner. And I will process them for 10 minutes. If you're curious what the texture of this is like once it sets, it's sort of, see it's just like a jelly or a jam. So if you can spread it, it'll set even more. That's just after an hour or so in the fridge. All my jars sealed up and as you can see, I forgot to put vinegar in the pot so I've got a mineral film. So that kind of shows you what that mineral film looks like that I've mentioned before. But Adam is going to test out my tomato jam that I made him. I didn't get any homemade bread made, but this will have to do. How is it? Pretty good. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Does it need more of something or less of something? It's pretty clovey. Too much clove? Probably. Okay. Less clove. We're trying to get it perfect for him since I didn't have a recipe to go on from the first time he had it and liked it, so. Good. Okay, so now that aftertaste has set in, so how's it now? Good. Good. <laughs> um, good. What about the texture? Texture was great. Yeah, in um, years past, he said it was like too watery, so he liked the thickness this time with the It's the, the best batch you've made so far. Okay, well, good. Good to know. This is what I love about him. He's always honest. He doesn't sugarcoat things. If I ask him his opinion on food, he like, he'll tell me for real what he thinks. Truth is better than anything else. Right, right. right. Okay, now we got to get him off to work, and we'll get another project started. All right, and today's project is doing something with these apples. I think we're going to turn them into apple pie filling and applesauce. First, I got to get them washed, though. I got one bushel all washed and sitting up here on the counter, and I'm just going to get these all chopped up. Well, as many as I can get chopped up and in this big pot over here, and we're going to turn those into sauce. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. 
Okay, and I got my pot here just as full as I could get with these um, apples. And as you can see, they're just halved. The seeds and everything are still in there. The only thing I removed were the stems here, and I still have quite a bit left from that first bushel. So as these cook down and I make a little more space in the pot, I'll add more of these. All right, so we did add a little bit of water to the bottom of this pot. You're gonna wanna make sure you do that so that they don't stick or burn or anything. Um, that'll kind of just simmer for a little bit and steam the apples on the top, and then I can come in and stir it around a little bit as the, the level kind of goes down. And this is going to uh, be doing this while we go to school. It is 8.53 in the morning, so I've got to finish getting kids ready, and then we'll do school, and then by the time we're done with school, this should be cooked down enough for me to move on to the next step. It's been about an hour, and as you can see, when they cook down, you make a little more space in your pot. So I've got my little ladies here, and they're going to slice up a few more apples, and we're going to add those there. We've got quite a few to work through today, don't we, ladies? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like apples? Yeah. Yeah. Green apples are Gracie's favorite fruit, aren't they? Elizabeth, what's your favorite fruit? Uh, green. I used to like red, though. You mean of apples, green's yeah. your favorite? Is that your favorite fruit? Like, of all time? Or do you like other fruits better? Well, I do like strawberries. Strawberries, yes. Yeah. Uh, apple's not my favorite. I like blueberries and strawberries. Too. Berries. And yep. And raspberries. Yeah, and raspberries. So basically we just like all kinds of fruit, right? Except for bananas. <laughs> Except for bananas. You do not like bananas. That's right. Okay, well we're going to get through the rest of these. So now I'm getting ready to start my apple pie filling. I have my apples cooking down over here. Um, and to, to turn these into sliced apples, the easiest thing that I have found is using my spiralizer that I use for vegetables like zucchini and things. Mine, and I'll link it in the description below, it comes with this flat razor blade that'll give me little apple slices. So let me show you what I do. I just take the apple and I stick it right through here. Okay, and you get to a point where it won't go anymore and you have what's left is just kind of the bottom. You have the core and the very bottom. The bottom of this I'm going to toss into my applesauce pot so that that isn't wasted. And then down here I have all of these wonderful little very thinly sliced apple pieces. Oh, Gabe wants a piece. <laughs> um, so these are going to be perfect for our apple pie filling that we're going to can. So I'm just tossing them into a bowl right here. I added about three tablespoons of lemon juice and I stir it around every time I add some more apple slices. That lemon juice is going to prevent these from browning while I'm in the process of getting the rest of these sliced up. So that's what I'm working on now. The rest of the apples from this bushel. Hi buddy. No, you need to finish the rest of that apple. That's wasting it. Why don't you go eat the rest? Um, so the rest of this bushel of apples that isn't going into sauce is going to be sliced down for apple pie filling and I'll um, take you along for the rest of that process too. But for now, I've got to get a slicey. <laughs> like that? Daddy stopped home from lunch and is helping us with the apples now. Wait a second, what's this? Some of us has a mushroom. Oh. <laughs> how fast? How fast do you think we can go? Ready? You, you count. Ready? What do you, you want to count? Start counting. One. No, oh, you gotta start counting. Ten. John. Ready? Start counting. One. Four. Three. Four. Oh, there we go. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Uh, yeah! That's the record. <laughs> That's the record. You gotta beat that, John. You think you can do it? Alright, and I've got my um, pie filling 
the liquid part already it brought to a boil and it's thickened up I'm gonna leave the um, recipe for this in the description below I've got my apple sliced and now all I'm gonna do is begin filling my jars I'll fill them just a little bit of the way with some apples pour in some filling then add a little bit more apples add the filling and you want to do that that way as opposed to just filling your jar with apple slices and then topping it with this if you do it that way you're going to get a lot of air bubbles in here so by just doing a little apples at a time and then topping it off with some filling and then you know doing the layers like that you have less of a chance of having air bubbles so let me kind of show you what that's like That made seven quarts of pie filling and I'm going to process these for 25 minutes in the water bath. My sauce has begun to cook down and so I'm going to fill seven quart jars with it and the rest of it is over here finishing up. But This is what I use for my applesauce. As I mentioned before I leave my peels and seeds and everything in the apples when I'm cooking them down. And then I put them through this. This is like the old school food mill kind of thing. I have an elderly friend who this is what she used her whole life to do her canning and she gave it to me and it's one of my favorite tools. So you can just put the cooked apples in the top and then you sort of move them around here and then the sauce will drip down the bottom. Um, you can kind of move it. I can't do this one handed. Um, let me try to see if I can do this, if I can set this down and show you. So anyways, that's how I get my applesauce, and from here I'm just scooping it into these jars, and then I'm going to process these in the water bath. It's getting hot here in the kitchen with the canners going, but I just wanted to let you know that this isn't the way that I always do my applesauce. Sometimes if I have a little less time on my hands, when I cook my apples down, I'll just put them directly into my food processor or my blender and I'll blend them up with the skins on. It doesn't make a huge difference in texture. There is a bit of a difference in texture, but my kids don't mind either way. I prefer it without the skins, um, but with the skins on, it's, it's just as edible for the kids and just as useful. Um, I'm just doing it this way today, and then you know tomorrow if I'm running short on time, maybe I'll do it the other way and show you. But these, as I mentioned, will go in the water bath canner and they will process for 20 minutes. Uh, sugar is optional in applesauce. Sugar and salt both are actually optional in most canning recipes. They are not added for safety whatsoever. The sugar doesn't really affect the acidity of, of the applesauce. So you can leave it out and your product is still going to be just as safe. Um, we prefer to leave it out because I feel like the applesauce is sweet enough and I don't need the added sugar when I'm feeding this to my children. When we open the jars, let's say if it's winter and we want to heat up the jar and enjoy it with a meal, we might add some cinnamon to it or something like that, but I typically don't season or sweeten my jars. Um, it makes them a little more versatile if you don't do that. You can always sweeten later if you want to. Um, but yeah, it isn't necessary. And as I mentioned, the same with salt. If you're looking at canning recipes, like for vegetables, for example, and the recipe says you can use salt, Remember that that is optional. You do not have to salt your vegetables for safety purposes. That is purely for flavor. So, all right, let's get lids on these and get them in the canner. Right, it is the next morning and I've got my helper, Gabe, here labeling all of these. We just put the year on the top because um, we can kind of figure out what the contents of the jar are. If it's something we don't know the contents, we'll label it. 
um, with that, but he is doing that. And then we also need to double check the seals. And how I do that is I just pick each jar up before I place it on the shelf, pick it up by the lid to make sure that the seal is nice and tight. And then we'll go ahead and add them to our messy shelves. Good morning, buddy. <laughs> I think someone's still tired. All right, let's get these on the shelves. You like those? I like them with the lemon juice. You like them with the lemon juice in them? Mm -hmm. A little sour? You boys like sour apples. Yes. I all right, busy, busy day in the kitchen as usual. I've got all this stuff I need to put away from the garden and some pork chops thawing. Adam's going to grill out tonight. But I've been using this um, spiralizer again to slice up some apples. I just put a little bit of lemon juice in here to prevent browning. And I'm going to sprinkle um, cinnamon in with these. And then we're going to get them on the dehydrator sheets. And this will be my project for today in case I can't get to any canning later on. That cinnamon, uh, I got it all mixed up in here. As you can see, they're pretty thoroughly coated. You could add sugar to this if you wanted to, or any other kind of nutmeg, allspice, anything that you would put in an apple pie filling. Um, but we feel like they're sweet enough when they're dehydrated. The sweetness is definitely more concentrated in these apple chips. So we don't add any sugar, but that's definitely a preference thing. All right, and then I'm just gonna spread these out on my dehydrator trays. Okay, I've got all my apples in the dehydrator here and I have it set for 135 degrees. We have an Excalibur dehydrator. I will link it in the description below, but these will take, I don't know, maybe 10 hours or so. Uh, times are just so dependent on the moisture, the humidity that's in the air and how um, thick they were sliced. These were extremely thin because I used the spiralizer, so they'll probably dry a little faster. So we'll just check in a little bit and now I can get on to some other things. <laughs> It is Saturday and I didn't get a chance to finish these apples yesterday, so I'm working on them today. I am doing uh, another batch of apple pie filling and then I'm getting some apples in the crock pot. These will cook down all day and then tomorrow I can turn these into apple butter. Um, so yeah, today's project is more filling. So I did put a little bit of water in the bottom of this to prevent sticking, but really I'm just tossed, a lot of this was the ends, if you see at the bottom, from spiralizing the apples for the filling, and then I just am feeling very lazy and tired today, so I just threw washed whole apples in here, and this will cook down and be enough for a small batch of um, apple butter, but I could slice these and try to fit more in here, and as they begin to cook down, I'll probably add more to the top, but this will just sit on low in the crock pot for the rest of the day. My apples I dehydrated yesterday are all done and I just wanted to show you how um, you know when you dehydrate something like zucchini it's crispy when it comes out. When you dehydrate fruit it has a higher um, moisture level that stays in the fruit and so it's still going to be a little bendy and that's completely normal. The more you dehydrate you kind of learn the appropriate texture but as you can see, my apples don't necessarily always snap. There's still a little bit of bend to them, and that's fine. Because with fruit, what you wanna do is when you put it in your containers and you seal it up and put it on the shelf, with fruit, you're gonna do what's called condition it. Because it doesn't dry evenly and it still has a little bit of bend to it, every day I'm gonna walk by this jar for a week and I'm just gonna shake it and kind of move the contents around with the hopes of taking the stuff that's on the bottom and kind of moving it more toward the top. If the stuff on the bottom is wet and kind of stuck down there, it could potentially mold. But if you shake it around, then any of the moisture from the bottom goes to the top and kind of goes through and the, the drier pieces, absorb some of the wetter pieces, and in the end you end up with a product that's shelf stable and safe. So. 
that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get all of these into containers. These will go up on the pantry shelf, and then I will condition them for the next week just by shaking them up a little bit like that. And then those will be snacks for the children. Um, they're delicious. They just taste like, like a little chip, a little cinnamon chip. So, all right. If for some reason you don't like the taste of dehydrated apple chips, these can also be rehydrated and used in baked goods. Like you could make an apple cobbler or an apple pie or something out of these if they were properly rehydrated. All right, and that's everything we were able to uh, preserve this week. It was a, kind of a busy week, so I'm happy with what we accomplished. And I addressed this today uh, in an Instagram post that you know, we're reaching kind of the point in the month where many of us are probably feeling a little burnout, and that's totally normal. You get tired, you're sick of canning, you're sick of washing jars and seeing these boxes of produce in your house. That's totally normal and understandable, but I just always need the reminder that the reason we do this and we work so hard during the harvest and preserving season is so we can rest in the off season. And if I do the work now and get things in jars and get the pantry filled up, over winter, I don't even need to leave the house to go to the grocery store. When it's cold and it's snowy outside, I can just huddle up, snuggle in with my kids by the fire, throw some, um, open some jars of meat and broth and veggies and just toss it in a pot on top of the wood stove and it'll cook down all day while I'm just reading books and snuggling my children. So it is worth it. Friends, <laughs> push through the burnout, um, fill up your larder, get your freezers full and um, you will reap the benefits of that this winter. So on to week four. I look forward to showing you what we were able to accomplish next week. Until then, bye friends.